Artificial intelligence is changing many sectors of our society, but one of the most impacted already is education. Yeah, we've been spotlighting this all week long, all the different ways it's impacting our lives. And as we reported last hour, it's already a subject that is working its way into the classroom to teach kids and how to use it the right yeah. way. Um, but a high school in Sterling Heights set to offer a course on understanding that technology this fall as well. Meantime, universities like Wayne State and U of M already are offering courses on AI, but the technology is working its way into a classroom in a different way as well as a way to cheat and to catch cheaters. Nick Monticelli this morning sits down with an Oakland University professor who's feeling frustrated about what's being done. On the subject of AI, has yes. it clept into your cl classroom already? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> a lot. Can you spot it? Yes, um, I did it two ways. One is we have this system called CopyLeaks, and CopyLeaks just added a feature which it'll say, I can show you a picture later, warning. Uh, um, this was not written by a human. And then the other way, for two of my classes, I forgot to turn CopyLeaks on, and, but all of a sudden, I started seeing the same example being used to explain a concept over and over and over again. These kids were like, um, for example, a bridge, for example, a bridge, for example, a bridge. Well, I never used that example in class. So I started thinking, why are they all using the same example and where are they getting it from, right? There's two possible explanations. One is they all collaborated together. They were studying together or whatever. And the other is they found it on the internet. How prevalent do you see this becoming an issue in both universities, colleges, and even, you know, K through 12? Maybe not K, but, you know, right, six, right, six right. through 12. Right, right. Huge. It's huge. I mean, I know people who are using it in middle school. Really? For sure. Middle schoolers? Middle schoolers. How do you handle a student using AI? Because... Technically, it's, you know, not plagiarism, so it's not in the code of conduct, but it's still not the right thing to be doing. Right. Well, I mean, it is cheating, so I think we handle it if, I mean, if they're lift, if they're putting it in and then the AI is spitting it out and then they're typing it up and turning it in without having done any work, I think that's akin to cheating, that mm -hmm. somebody else wrote your essay for you, in mm -hmm. this case, a computer. Um, so I think that... Um, we could say is in the code of conduct because it is cheating, and yeah. cheating is in the code of conduct. Certainly a gray area, though, something we have to navigate, right? Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure, because there's that continuum again, right? <laughs> it's like, because, like, look, you can use these tools, you know, that are, um, and they could be good for you. Mm -hmm. They could count as learning, right? Like, for example, there's Grammarly. So I write my whole paper and then I put it into Grammarly just to make sure my grammar is correct, right? And sometimes it's flagged by these things as not having been written by a human. I wrote it, right? But it's just rearranging some of my sentences and it's you know, changing the grammar for me so that it sounds better. Is that cheating? I don't know. I don't think so. It seems like your big issue is having a conversation on a larger level, how do we kind of police this AI world? Right, exactly. And how can, it's look, it's here to stay. It's not going anywhere. Right. So the question is, how can we uh, bring it into the classroom? Because it's there anyway. It's, not, it's gonna be used. So how can we bring it into the classroom in a way that makes it actually a learning tool and a help for students to increase their learning as opposed to, right, uh, undermining what they're here for, which is to learn. 